So consider this for just a moment, because this is a really good opportunity to understand something that we've been talking about. So you want to be an uplifter. So you have to continue to activate and keep active. You're knowing that you are an uplifter and you have to give no attention to whether you're uplifting anyone or not. Because in doing so, now you're aware of their response to you, which is where it goes wonky. You have to leave their response to you out of it because that's on them and only do it for your response to your own desire. Do you know there are those who will not be uplifted? If you've got your eye on whether they're being uplifted or not, then you lose your connection and then you feel bad. So this has to be a singular intent only. I do it. Why? Why do I do it? I want to feel good and I want to be in alignment so that I can uplift them. Eh. Because now their response to you is part of the equation and that's where it always gets muddled. So stop for just a moment. Imagine your inner being or imagine a cluster of inner beings which you want to call source. Try to get a visual on source aware of all of you. And do you think source is ever saying, look at all those suckers of energy? <laughs> And you know why source would never feel that way or think that way? Because source remains in the replenishing mode. And so there's never any drag. There's never any drain and not so with you either. So that wasn't our intent to point out to you that there is a drain. We just want you to feel the never ending replenishment that is always yours because we really want you to hear this. You cannot focus too specifically when you are tuned in, tapped in, turned on. But you can focus too specifically when you're not. This is a really good conversation because the thing about that is, so you're tuned in, ideas start to come, you're flowing with them, and it's good until it isn't. So when it stops feeling good, does that mean that the work that you did before is irrelevant or does it just mean leave it there for now? That's what we call don't try so hard, don't try to make it happen, don't try to push the noodle. Here's the thing. If you've let it get to anxiety, then there's nothing for you to do in the moment because everything you try to do to get rid of anxiety will cause more anxiety. That's why we say, let's get out ahead of it. Don't fall in the hole and then try to climb out. Stay away from the hole. That's what we mean by getting out ahead of it. Be nicer to yourself. Give yourself more time. Do the things that soothe you most. Don't get depleted and then try to fix it. Do the things that encourage the opposite of depletion, which is renewal and replenishment. Find a time to meditate and do more basking and get off to yourself and let yourself daydream. Because if you're out ahead of it, more momentum can happen. But if you've caught yourself in resistance and you try to fix it, the momentum follows the resistance rather than the allowing. Does that make sense to you? Whatever's most active within you, that's the direction that it's going to go. A while back, and Esther demonstrated it for friends the other day, we encouraged Esther to take a piece of paper and in one corner uh, write something that was representative of good things she wants. And in the other corner of the paper, we asked her to put a symbol that was evidence or an indicator of things unwanted. And then we asked her to make herself a dot right in the middle of the bottom of the paper. And then we asked her to just begin daydreaming. And so she thought a thought that was in harmony with all the good things she wants. We just began drawing a little line from where she was in that direction. And as she thought more, then more. And as she thought more, then more. But eventually, and quicker than she would want to admit, but it was perfect and fine, she got somewhere where she thought a thought that started to go off this way. In other words, it was a action thought, a what I need to do thought, or an old belief thought. But because she had some momentum already going that way, in the moment that she started to go that way, she caught it and then thought a better thought about that, and off she went again. And then another thought sort of tried to take her over there, but she caught it and thought a better thought, and off she went. Now, this is another way. In other words, you can, if you're in a good feeling place and you are sensitive to the way you feel, 
You can think the thoughts deliberately. You could meditate and get tuned in, which would lead you to blissful thoughts. And then you could receive an idea that just feels really good. And for a moment in time, you could be right there. But what trips you up is you don't want to just be there in energy or in emotion. You want the manifestation. And in the moment that you begin the efforting, that's when you begin moving in the other direction. If we could convince you that everything you want is because you want to feel good in the having of it, then if you could let the feeling good be the singular intention that you have, not uplifting the world, not fixing things that are broken, not making the world a better place, but just having a really good time being the bright light that you are. Yeah? We're not for a moment asking you to discard those thoughts. It's wonderful to get an idea about what you want to do. So we're not suggesting for a moment that when those thoughts come, that you shouldn't pursue those thoughts. Satisfaction comes from one place and one place only. Having an idea of what you want and moving in the direction of it. All we're asking you to be more aware of is when you are being a dream killer to your own dream. That's all. Don't be practical about your dreams because when you're practical about them, you try to put pieces in that you don't have yet. You are practical, you are humans. And it's the thing that Esther is most focused upon, not focusing upon these days. It's the thing that she's most focused upon, not focusing upon. She wants to jump into action too soon because the dream doesn't feel like it's enough, but it is. The dream is enough. And if you can dream it and it's enough and dream it and it's enough and dream it and it's enough and dream it and it's enough, it will demand things of you that you can't not give it, but they will be things that are in harmony with the dream. The impulse will be so strong that nothing could keep you from following that. And that's the difference between receiving the thought and trying to think it into place. Did you get that? So good. What we're wanting Esther to understand means don't be so practical so soon. Every desire needs work on resistance. The problem is the work on resistance just makes the resistance more. <laughs> so rather than work on resistance, what you're wanting to work on is more allowance, which is finding ways to feel better about the desire. So let's talk about something real. The other day, Esther was visiting with some friends and they went on a day journey, just a few hours up into the Rocky Mountains. So Esther set herself up in that she's prepaved in that she imagined a nice day and it was, and she imagined lots of fun and laughter with her friends. And there was that when that moment of ecstasy came, it was just momentum. There had been no subterfuge to the momentum, which just meant, I like this, 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 I like this. And soon there is a crescendo that just takes your breath away. And you feel like the most blessed and the most loved. But most people don't do that. Most people say, I like this, not that so much. I like this, not that so much. I like this, oh, I could do without that. And so the momentum doesn't build to that place of ringing your bells in that way. Does that make sense to you? Now that's just an example of a few hours in a car together. But your whole life is that way. This is good, this isn't. This is good, this isn't. This is good, this isn't. The subject here is the subject of momentum. Esther translates into some of her old-fashioned vocabulary that many of you may not even be able to relate to. It's like priming the pump. Priming the pump. Did you ever prime a pump? Sometimes you have to suck on a hose to get it going and then once it gets going then so priming the pump or get out ahead of it a segment intend look for positive aspects you cannot be practical because your practicality 
will kill the momentum that objectivity that practicality is I really want more money but I don't have enough right now I really want more money but my family never had enough money I really want more money but my job just doesn't pay enough I really want more money but so there's not an allowance of the laws of the universe to help you out so it takes some decision and we like determination but we want your determination to be focused upon the determination to find the best feeling thoughts and if you find yourself working too hard at it then it's not really a good exercise so the easiest thing to get momentum going is to find something that it's easy to get momentum going about now we're going to give you something here that's going to help you enormously this will make sense to all of you it's our favorite way of explaining this every subject is two subjects like the end of the stick that has what you want on it and the end of the stick that has the absence of what you want on it I want more money is one end of the stick I don't have enough money is the other end so let's say that that's not the only stick in the pile there's the money stick there's the relationship stick there's the way I earn my money stick there's the friendship stick there's the lover stick there's the where I live stick there's all this bundle of sticks and let's say that you've decided that you're going to identify and isolate feeling good on the money stick so you think about it but the other end of the stick you've practiced it more so every time you try to think about or daydream about more money you just become more practical and realize that you don't have enough so you try but it's a struggle and you never really get there and then you feel like you're not good at this but what if in that pile of sticks there was a really good feeling stick maybe it's your dog your little dog Ooh, that cute little dog that cute little dog that licks your face that cute little dog that you have never had anything but a blissful thought about you just can't bring yourself to do anything but love that dog do you have one of those dogs do you know one of those dogs so that little dog as you're thinking about that little dog you're thinking about that little dog and it's so easy to be on that end of the stick and so you think about the little dog you think about cute little dog that dog that waits for you and loves you and uh, is so unconditional in that love and so really adorable think about the pictures of that dog that dog that is so easy for you to love so that's the stick that you're focused upon and the other end of the stick just is not activated at all by activating that end of that stick you now have access to that end of all of those sticks now you might jump to the money stick in which case you'll go to the other end but it takes a minute and meanwhile you did good work on all the end of all those sticks if you just understand that it's a vibrational thing that you're doing here you're tuning yourself to this end of the stick which is to say you're tuning yourself to positive expectation which is to say you're tuning yourself to the way your inner being looks at all your sticks which means you're tuning yourself to pure positive energy which means you're tuning yourself to being in the receiving mode which means you're tuning yourself to being in the vortex which means you're tuning yourself to being a vibrational match to what's in your vortex you see what we're getting at so don't be practical take the path of least resistance what is the easiest stick to feel good about whatever it is and before you know it you'll feel good about just about all the sticks and if you're like most humans you'll still focus upon the problem stick you don't need to so it works the other way too maybe you've got this pile of sticks and you're feeling pretty good about them you like your house you like your mate you like your job you're doing really good you just don't like that one neighbor <laughs> well you know you could focus upon the neighbor or the barking dog that lives with the neighbor you could focus there and before you know it you've activated the other end of all of your sticks because that's the way tuning is you see